when you're having to walk through in a ballroom or whatever it is, just making sure that you're ready to play when the ball goes up. Have you been able to see a change in all in attitude, concentration in him? Just in terms of uh, de demeanor? No, you just, you know, you start the season, you want to build habits. That's what it, this is all about. It's about improvement, building habits. So there's not like any one day where you, you wake up and you go, oh, the magic is here. The magic is what, in what you do every day. And so if you're building the right habits, you'll get better. And so every day you have to put everything you have into it. You have to concentrate every day. And uh, the games keep coming. They come fast. And in the NBA, if you, if you want to, you can find an excuse every night. Or you can make good and just get it done. Can you see any change in approach to him? Just building habits. Just doing the, try to do the right things every day. You guys got off to that really bad start defensively to, you know, to the start of the year in the basement and defensive efficiency for a while. You pushed towards the top 10 or so over the last like 10, 15 games. What changed? Just got to keep working at it. You know, we had a, a tough early schedule in terms of travel, uh, but just a lot of new faces. Uh, so getting everyone we knew going into camp with all the changes that we made, the biggest challenge would, would be how quickly can we get everyone onto the same page, both offensively and defensively. And so, uh, and that's where the great value in having Jimmy and, and Tosh just moving the group along. Coach, you spoke about Jimmy. You averaged 16 points in October, 18 points in November. He's at 27 points a game since December. Is it just him getting comfortable with something specific change to spark his? No, just to, you know, him providing what we needed. I think, you know, he, the, the great thing about Jimmy is it's not only, you know, we already know what he can do. He's perennial all-star, all-NBA, an Olympian. He's already shown what he can do. And so the challenge of being a great player in this league is also to bring the best out of your teammates. And so that was the best way for him to get everyone else comfortable. And then he, he's asserted himself a lot more in terms of the scoring. Is this something that he had when you last coached him in Chicago? Or yeah, I mean, he's always been like the, I'd say that, you know, each year he got a lot better in Chicago. Uh, the defense was always there, the offense came. But I'd say the biggest thing is the leadership. That's the thing that, you know, I wasn't around in the past two years and just seeing how much he's grown in, in that area. And I think he also, he benefited coming into uh, uh, Chicago where he had really good vets, particularly Lou Aldang. And it was a really good team. And those guys helped him come along. And then, and of course, Jimmy, the way he works, his intelligence combined with his talent, uh, that's what makes him who he is. But I think the things that he does every day to help our young, young guys see how important everything is, you know, whether it's, you know, preparation to get ready to play, whether it's practice, whether it's in a game, not taking any possessions off, how important defense is, how important it is to play for the team, to make plays, to to make winning plays. I, Jimmy's had great impact on winning. He's changed our culture here. You mentioned uh, Jimmy and Taj helping defensively. Has that been more you know, stabilizing what you're doing while they're on the court or teaching the younger guys about you know, what they Both. should Both. I think you know, it's important to, you know, as you, you have young guys, and that's the, the great thing about our team is you have uh, two young guys that are 22 years old, and they're, they're learning. And so you know they're going to get a lot better as they go along here. Uh, and then to have, uh, you know, Taj has been great for Carl, and Jimmy has been great for Wig, and Jimmy's been great for everyone on our team. But I think you can go do things in practice. And, the, you know, of course, you know, the, the repetition part is important. Uh, and then you also have the trial and error part of it, doing it in a game. You know, can you get it done in a game? And the, the intensity of the game is far different. And so uh, just having those guys out there and where they've been through it so many more times, I think it's helpful for them as well. Tom, you always talk about impacting the game without scoring. It, it seems like Andrew's been doing a lot more of that of late. Are you pleased with the yeah, contributions? Yeah, and he has. Uh, you know, the, the last game he had nine rebounds, four assists. Uh, the Indiana game, he had several plays defensively. And, we want him to use his, his athleticism where plays in which he gave great help, deflected, got out into the open floor and he turned it into easy offense. And oftentimes you see Jimmy doing that. 
And so I think he's picked up some things in that way. He's also moving a lot better without the ball. And so, and, th and that's one of the things that Jimmy does great when he's penetrating. If you cut and you're open, he's going to hit you without hesitation. So he's he's uh, he's getting people easy buckets. And so, and, and Andrew's starting to see that. He's starting to make plays and getting easy bu buckets for other people. At this point, how much do you consider improved three-point shooting? In well, you know, again, I would say if you study our stats, which I'm sure you do, Right, you would see that. Every night. Well, yeah, and I, I hear how guys don't fit, and all I see is, I know we, we're top five in several offensive categories. So, points scored, offensive rating, assists, not turning the ball over. So, yeah, there's you know we're always trying to do things better. Last night, uh, Pop was talking about minute restrictions. He's got three guys on him. Basically, this season, how tough it is to, to deal with that. And I don't know if you had it here, but you had it in Chicago. I guess the wall probably there. How do you ever learn to, you know, to manage through that? Well, every team is different, and so I think it's whether you, sometimes you have older players, uh, you know, so you you'll cut their minutes back. Sometimes you have younger players, so you're going to play them more. Uh, so if a guy's coming off the injury, you want to see where he is first, see where his conditioning is. So, pacing a team is, you know, I think only the head coach really has an understanding of where you are with the team. So every night, if you look at the box scores, you'd see that you know there's some pretty good teams out there that are, you know, you look at Houston, uh, they're doing okay, you know. So there's there's a lot of different ways to do it. Um, so you just deal with it. Carl and Andrew were both guys that when they came into the league, there was a thought that they could be like elite defensive players for their position. They sort of struggled last year and a little bit at the start of this year too. Do you still see that kind of elite? No, well, I think for them? you know, like when. I, when you look at, and we all tend to do this, you know, everybody, is you tend to measure players against other players that maybe are in the league for seven or eight years, and then you forget the steps that they took along the way. I think if you talk to most guys that come into the league, and after they've been in the league seven or eight years, and if you ask them about their rookie year, they would tell you about some of their experiences. And like when you come in, you have no idea what the league is all about. You think you do. But those vets that are coming at you, they, they have all the tricks. So I think you have to learn that. That's, that's part of the, the, the learning process. And so, as I mentioned, the thing about Carl and, and, and Andrew is they're both real young and they're learning. And so hopefully as they go through things and they play against somebody for a 40th or 50th, 50th time, they'll have a much better understanding who that person is. And I think, you know, they're going to get a lot better, you know, so I think that they, they and you know, like, and we'll take Golden State, for example. So Golden State was a very good team. They went through steps. So they won 23 and then, I don't know, 40 and then they, they got to 50. And they were very good offensively, right? And then when they changed, and Draymond, of course, had a lot to do with that, and I think Andre Iguodala did as well, and of course Bogut going there. But once they combined that offense with their, that great defense, they went to an entirely different level. So then when you look at the teams that have been to the conference finals over the last 20 years, you see that they're strong on both sides of the ball. So that's what you're striving to, uh, towards. You know, you can't, you're not going to have success in the playoffs without being a, a great defensive team. So understanding the importance of balance is, is critical also. Thanks, Coach.